In this video, we're going to see a specific example of changing the basis. So what I've got down here is two different bases. I have a B basis, which has got two vectors. They're literally independent, and so they're a basis for R2. And a C basis, where I've got another pair of vectors that are again literally independent, and so are again are going to be a basis for R2. Now, what I want to do is figure out how do I transform a vector from the B basis into the C basis. So, I'll remind you how the formula worked. Suppose I was interested in figuring out what some particular vector x was if I could express it in the C basis. Then, what we decided was that this was going to be some big matrix multiplied by that same vector x, but this time the vector x is expressed in the B basis. And then what went into the matrix? Well, you put the basis vectors for B in there, that is the B1 and the B2, but you had to express both of these vectors in the C basis. So in other words, if you could convert just the B basis vectors into the C basis, then you could convert everything into the C basis by multiplying by that same matrix. Okay, so that's our goal. I want to express B1 in the C basis first, I want to express B2 in the C basis, and then I'll be able to do everything else just by this particular formula. So let's do the B1 first. I want to know what B1 of in the C basis is going to be. And we have a formula here. Uh, one possibility was that we could come along here and we could just write this as the C1 and the C2 and I don't make any changes and that that was precisely going to be the vector B1. This was just our first approach where I could take any vector, say that B1, and I can write it in the C basis by this particular formula. However, what I actually want to do is to invert this formula. I'm trying to find this. I'm trying to find the B1 vector in the C basis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this C1 and I'm going to invert it and I'm going to put it over there. So let me get rid of this particular coefficient matrix and I'm going to come and I'm going to put it over on this side. It's going to be the C1, the C2, and whatever that matrix is, I'm therefore going to invert it. And this gives me my way of expressing the B1 in the C basis. So what do I have to do here? I've got specific numbers, so let's plug them in. Well, this is going to be the inverse of 1, 1, 1, 2. In other words, I've taken this C basis and I've put those in for the columns. And then I'm going to be multiplying by my B1, and my B1 is 7, 5. Remembering again that when I talk about my basis vectors and I, I don't put a, a subscript, it's because I'm referring to them in the standard basis. Now thankfully we have this clean little way by which we can compute the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. We remember that out the front is the 1 over AD minus BC, so 1 over the main diagonal, which is 2, minus the off diagonal, which is 1. So it looks like it's just a 1 out the front. And then I alternate the A and the D, so this is going to be a 2 here and a 1 there. And I put minus 1 in front of the B and the C. All right, and then I've got that same 7, 5. And now this is just a computation I can go and compute, and what am I going to get? Well, the 1 over 2 minus 1, that's just a 1. I'm going to ignore that from now on. Looks like I'm going to get a 14 minus a 5 is going to be a 9 on the top. And a minus 7 plus a 5 is going to be a minus 2 on the bottom. So I claim that is my B1 in the C basis. I'm going to repeat quickly the same thing for B2. All right, so I have my B1 and my B2 both written in that C basis. Okay, so let's figure out how we are supposed to use them. You'll recall that we had this formula here. This was going to be our change of basis formula. Now I know the B1 in the C basis, and I know the B2 in the C basis. So let's come down here, and I'm going to get my result that if I want to take any vector x, and I want to write it in the C basis, 
What is it going to be? Well, it's the B1 in the C basis, this 9 minus 2. And then the second column is going to be the B2 in the C basis, so the 7 minus 5. And then I'm going to put in the vector x given in the B basis. If I want to take a specific example of this, I could say, suppose I have a specific vector x, and it's going to be the vector, how about 1, 1. So I'm saying that this vector in the B basis is going to be 1, 1. Then if I want to know what that same vector is in the C basis, it's going to be the 9, 7, minus 2, minus 5. That matrix all multiplied by 1, 1. And what do we get? 9 plus 7 is 16. Minus 2, minus 5 is minus 7. And I get this vector here. I want to give you a little bit of a different flavor on the same thing. You can just use what we did above. You can just use what I'm about to show you. It doesn't really matter. It accomplishes the same thing, but it does it in a, a very slightly different way. So what I want to focus on is that change of basis matrix. I want to focus on that matrix, which was the B1 written in the C basis and the B2 written in the C basis as well. One of the things that we had seen in the previous video, and we can get out of how we just computed that, is that effectively what this was, was that C1, C2, so the columns are just the basis vectors for C2, and then we inverted it, and we multiplied it against each of the two different B1, so the B1 and the B2. So if you prefer to sort of collapse what we did above from two different steps down into one step, that's what you could do. It, it really would be the same thing. It would just be a matter of first going and figuring out the C matrix, inverting it, and then multiplying it against the B, B matrix all at once, opposed to what we did above, which was multiply it by the B1 first, and then multiply it by the B2 second. I don't really mind. One further interpretation of this is the following. Suppose I'm multiplying this to just some vector x that's being specified and it's going to be a vector x, which is living in the B basis. Well, if I look at what just that portion of it is, right, the B matrix multiplied by this vector in the B basis, then what is this just going to be? This is just going to be a vector in the standard basis. So in other words, if I just look at the B matrix applies to this vector, I get a vector in the standard basis. And then if I think about what's occurring at the next level, if I say, look, I'm going to go and multiply it by the C inverse thing, what that is doing is taking this vector, which is in the standard basis now, and putting it into the C basis. Or in other words, this is going to be from the standard to the C basis. So in other words, under this way of thinking about it, what I'm doing is first is multiplying by a matrix that takes it from the B basis to the standard basis, and then I'm multiplying by the C matrix that takes it from the standard basis out to the C basis. So instead of going directly from B to C, what's, what's really happening in this particular matrix is that you're going from the B through the standard to the C. Now, of course, all these different ways of thinking about it are equivalent, and for the purpose of computing it out, I don't really mind. I've given you a few different options that you can pick and choose from.